In this video, we're going to give you an all things nutrition review of the 7 day meal plan using Click for Taz's I ate the recommended British nutritional diet for a week video. What is the BNF 7 day meal plan? Should you try it? Stay tuned to find out my thoughts on it as a British nutritionist. I've been wanting to work on my nutrition for a while, but I honestly just never knew where to start. But then I came across this nutritional weekly plan recommended by the British Nutrition Foundation. And just by looking at the plan, you can tell it's very British. So what is the British Nutrition Foundation 7 day meal plan? The meal plan was developed to help understand how to meet recommendations on free sugars, fibre and nutrient based dietary guidelines. Don't worry, I'll go into detail on each of these recommendations in a bit. The 7 day meal plan provides a balance of meals from the different food groups to reflect a healthy balanced diet shown by the Eat Well Guide. Let me explain the Eat Well Guide a little. The Eat Well Guide is the UK's healthy eating model. It's a simple, practical tool to help us make healthy choices and to show the proportion in which different food groups are needed to make up a healthy, balanced diet. The Eat Well Guide has taken the foods and drinks we consume and split them into five main food groups, each in different proportions. First of all, you have the fruits and vegetables. Then you have potatoes, bread, rice, pasta, and other starchy carbohydrates. Then beans, pulses, fish, eggs, meat, and other proteins, dairy and alternatives, and finally, oils and spreads. Now, you don't have to eat all the food groups in these proportions at every meal time, but rather over the space of a day or even a week. Meals on the seven day meal plan are typical of the meals cooked or prepared in many UK homes using a mix of fresh and processed ingredients. But I just want to say there's no one size fits all. So the meals can be suitably swapped for ones that you enjoy, like Taz did. I'm having falafel wrap. Um, this is the one that I changed. I can't, I think they said something like lentil soup and a wrap or something. So I was like, I'm gonna go for the falafel wrap because it's quick and easy. And it also allows you to still have a little bit of what you fancy, in moderation. So things like dark chocolate, red wine and biscuits are on the menu. It is dark chocolate. I've never tried this before, so let's see how this goes. Oh, it's actually a lot sweeter than I thought it was going to be. Oh, that's not bad. That's actually quite nice. All right, turns out I'm a dark chocolate fan. And if you're a fan of peanut butter, you're in luck. I've actually never had peanut butter spread before, so hopefully I like it. Oh, it's a really thick consistency. It really sticks to your teeth. Oh, I like it. It's so sticky. That's right. Dark chocolate and peanut butter are on the menu. So they must be good for you, right? Well, I don't have time in this video to go into detail, but watch our video, Is Dark Chocolate Good For You? And Is Peanut Butter Good For You? to find out. I'll leave a link to the videos in the description below. Now let's go into detail about the UK recommendations that the meal plan will help you eat. Let's start by looking at the free sugars recommendation. It recommends that we should have no more than 5% of total energy from free sugars. So that's seven sugar cubes each day. What exactly are free sugars? Free sugars are sugars that have been added to food or drinks. These include sugars added at home by a chef or food manufacturer. Also included are sugars found in honey, syrups, e.g. maple and agave, and unsweetened fruit, vegetable juices and smoothies. Sugars naturally found in fruit and vegetables do not count. Why? Well, because the sugar remains inside the cells. Fruit contains sugar alongside other nutrients such as vitamins, minerals and fibre, meaning in addition to the sugar itself, which is important in our body's energy metabolism, you receive additional health benefits through consuming fruit, rather than fruit sugars by themselves. But why do we need to reduce the intake of free sugars? Well, there has been research to show free sugar has been associated with a range of potential health problems, including obesity, diabetes and heart disease. So we do need to try and cut back on it. Now let's have a look at fibre. It's recommended that we have at least 30 grams of fibre a day. So what is fibre? Fibre is an important plant-based carbohydrate. There are lots of types of fibre and it's a good idea to include a variety of fibre-rich sources in the diet as they may have different health benefits. A good way of adding fibre into the diet is by including whole grain varieties, such as whole grain breakfast cereals, whole wheat pasta, whole wheat and multigrain breads, wraps and going for buckwheat and quinoa instead of rice every now and again. One thing I've noticed is all the options are wholemeal, like wholemeal bread, wholemeal pasta, spaghetti. I would give the spaghetti bolognese a 9 out of 10. The menu plan also meets UK food and nutrient based standards such as energy, salt, saturated fat, five a day and fish. 
Let's start by looking at energy and calories. It's recommended that you should have around 2000 calories a day. By following the seven day meal plan, on average, you'll be getting 1,964 calories a day. A healthy diet should provide us with the right amount of energy, calories or kilojoules from foods and drinks to maintain energy balance. What does energy balance mean? Well, it's where the calories taken in from the diet are equal to the calories used by the body. We need these calories to carry out everyday tasks such as walking and moving about, but also for all the functions of the body we may not even think about, like breathing, pumping blood around the body and thinking. Now let's look at salt. It's recommended that we should have no more than six grams of salt a day. On average, the meal plan provides four grams of salt a day. It's recommended we try and reduce our salt intake. Why? Well, in the short term, it could cause bloating and some symptoms of dehydration. And in the long term, it can increase the risk of developing heart disease. So try and go easy on that salt shaker. Now let's look at the five a day recommendation. Five a day of what? Well, that's at least five fruits and veg portions a day. The menu plan will give you on average eight portions a day. Why do we need five a day? Well, having five a day will give you all of the good stuff like vitamins and minerals and fiber, which helps to maintain a healthy gut. Orange juice does count as one of your five a day, but only one 150 ml glass. That is the tiniest amount of orange juice I've ever had. How very specific, I must say. Only a small amount counts as one of your five a day. Because in the process of juice making, juice is extracted from the fruit, leaving behind its beneficial fiber and providing a concentrated dose of calories and sugar. So the smaller the glass, the better. Now let's look at drinks. It's recommended that we drink six to eight glasses of fluid each day, which can include drinks like unsweetened herbal and fruit infusions and tea and coffee. Mm, PG tips for the win. Using my favorite and only mug. I don't actually drink tea, so it's questionable if I'm even British at this point. Oh, I do love me a good cuppa. Looks like Taz added sugar to her tea. Try not to add sugar to hot drinks. It's an easy way of reducing free sugar intake. Now let's sum up with an all things nutrition review. The British Nutrition Foundation 7 day meal plan is not the only way to try and meet UK's food and nutrient based guidelines, but it may help you give you a good starting point. Having a meal plan like this can save you time. Planning your meals for the week can help you manage your time better. We spend a lot of time deciding what to eat, grocery shopping, cooking, and then cleaning up after dinner. By planning ahead and organizing your meals, it means there's no more last minute trips to the shops and reduces the aimless wandering and overspending when you're there. Also, having your meals organized ahead of time can reduce the dreaded what's for dinner question. We know planning dinner can be an unnecessary stress, particularly on weeknights when you have to race home and try and get a healthy, nutritious meal on the table. If you have a healthy meal plan organized, it's one less thing to think about after a long day. Having a meal plan can help you enjoy more variety. When you're busy, it can be easy to cook the same thing over and over again. Meal planning helps to ensure you're eating a variety of different foods and it can help you eat more fruits and vegetables, which can help reduce the risk of chronic lifestyle diseases. By following a healthy meal plan, it would also help ensure you're eating the right foods in the right portions. There is no one size fits all, so find a way that works for you and your lifestyle. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Hit that like button and subscribe to watch more videos just like this. Remember, enjoy food and stay happy and healthy. Catch you on the next one.